What is going on, everybody, and welcome to a special episode 71 of Betting and Boozing here on the HHH Racing Podcast. My name, I am Kyle Roscoe with my co-host, Charlie Freeman and Patrick Kunstel. We are going to bring you guys the late pick five and all stakes races on Santa Anita Derby Day this Saturday. That is April 6th. It looks like a fantastic card out there in California. Thank you guys all for watching. Welcome in to the show. We're going to go through the peripherals real quick then we'll get right into the handicapping down below you see scrolling betting and boozing at gmail.com is where you can email me questions comments concerns anything of the sort please email me there down below the video player please go down below hit the like button and hit the subscribe button it's the easiest way to support our channel and not only will it give you every single episode that is posted to the HHH Racing Podcast channel. It'll continue to push these videos out into the YouTube algorithm to hopefully bring like-minded individuals like yourself over to the HHH Racing Podcast channel. And for that, we thank you. But guys, again, if you're watching this on this on the week of before the Santa Anita Derby, we have a pool party this Saturday at Crazy Poor Villa Park, uh, Club Hawthorne OTB, Villa Park, Illinois, Come hang out with us. It is going to be from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Again, that's a crazy pour in Villa Park, Illinois, which is a Hawthorne OTB. Of course, great friends of the podcast in Hawthorne. Come have some fun. And it's believe it's $35. You get um, you'll get food, drink, um, our racing analysis, and then any share. We get a thousand dollar betting pool. Any money that we make with the thousand dollar betting pool will go home with you guys. The first year we did this, people bought in for thirty five dollars, went home with over a hundred and fifty. So again, for all the fun that we had throughout the day, you also get you also have the chance to walk home with a lot more money than you came in with. Come out and hang with us there. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor is where we post every single episode of the HHH Racing Podcast in audio form. Please go rate, review, and subscribe over there. Of course, the HHH Racing Podcast Power Picks over two and a half years, still well in the black as of as ROI is concerned. Patreon.com slash HHH Racing Podcast. The link is also in the description of this YouTube video. Please go over there. And if you want to find out anything about us or look at previous editions of the power picks before you buy them, that is all found at HHH racing podcast.com. But guys, like I said, we're not only covering the late pick five for you guys today, we're going to cover the two stakes races that are outside of the late pick five as well. Albeit there are five and six horse fields, but still one of them has very big ramifications as that is who's going to race in the, um, in the Kentucky Oaks, barring obviously that uh, Baffert doesn't come in and steal points, which <laughs> looks like she might as Baffert has two of the five in that race. But we will take a look, of course, with all the other interesting races on the card. Boys, let's get right into it here. No need to waste more time. Race four is the evening jewel stakes going six and a half furlongs on the dirt for California bred Phillies, three year old Phillies, as I bring up the Equibase right now. We do have morning lines for you guys this morning as the number is the number two Marinda from Mike Smith and Gary Mandela is your eight to five morning line favorite. I actually handicapped these without morning line. So that's actually pretty interesting to me that that horse is going to be eight to five morning line favorite. Second choice, the number four grease missile fifth, third choice, the number five quick Kate. And I'll bring up the picks right now. And Pat, you and I are both going with the same horse. What is going to be tied is the longest shot on the board at six to one in Roberta's love for Frankie Dettori and Hector Palma. Charlie, you're going a different way. You're going with the number two, the morning line favorite, Marinda. And Noah, you'll see who is not here. Of course, school comes first, so he is out. He has a big presentation tomorrow. He's preparing for that. But he has the number one, Safa, on top for Tiago Pereira and Gary Stute. Charlie, I'll let you go first and then kind of throw it to Patrick, then we'll keep moving along. Um, not too much to talk about in the six horse field, but you are going with the morning line favorite, Miranda. Yeah, for me, honestly, what it just came down to is banking on, you know, the effort to back being the one that we'll end up getting in this race. Obviously, maybe the seven furlongs was just a little bit, you know, too much. And the pace was pretty decent, even for California fans. I mean, it wasn't red up, but it was hot enough. Uh, horses working forwardly. And again, the, the, the debut was just extremely impressive. Obviously, in both of her, in her short career so far, both efforts took a ton of money. So I'd imagine this horse will probably bet down pretty heavy anyway. I mean, I didn't expect a originally either but uh it probably will end up being you know seven to five six to five i just that 82 for me is good enough to beat anyone in this field so i'm banking on that 
Uh, and then, yeah, I'm kind of surprised though that the one and three are both six to one because I was really intrigued with both those underneath, which it appears we all are. Is uh, you know Noah obviously has that has the one on top, and then Pat has the three, and you know it seems like we're sending those. But I'm curious what you guys kind of thought going with uh, one of the longer shots on the board. Go ahead, Pat. Yeah, you know I think with the the three, uh, you know she took a nice step forward um, off her maiden debut. Uh, you know jumped up respectably in the buyer level. Uh, and won convincingly in that spot, you know, was up close to the pace, had, a, you know, a nice little stalking trip and, and then pounced. And I think the two horses that she beat, you know, look pretty formidable too. You know, they haven't raced since, but, you know, they've worked well looking back at them and stuff like that. So I I think that, you know, she's right in the thick <clears> of things. And I, I, I don't know, these morning lines seem a little bit off to me because I, I do think that these horses are way more bunched up than, you know, what we're getting. And I mean, if I'm getting, you know, two out of my three choices, um, like the one uh, in there as well, Noah, who Charlie pointed out, Noah has on top. Um, you know, Kyle, I, I'd like to know what you think about the three and, you know, the one as well. Well, yeah, and I think the two is going to be the more going to be the favorite as this horse ran a massive race on debut and then came back as a three to five, as a two to five favorite in that race. That was on uh, Breeders' Cup weekend over at Santa Anita. So that this is the horse's first time back. So I'm assuming that that horse will get favoritism, obviously working very forwardly guys, but you can see it time form doesn't have it labeled as a hot pace, but there are three horses. I want to go for the lead and Marinda grease smile and clubhouse bride, all being those horses being uh, the two, four and six. See the two obviously had it her way. The first time out uh, the, what's the, the four grease missile going to do. Definitely going to have to go out for the lead and clubhouse brightest has, has shown that she not shown that she can pass horses at all so clubhouse bride's gonna be going for the lead i think it just sets up perfectly for the three roberta's love and if i'm gonna get anywhere near six to one that could be a uh not a nuke play necessarily but a pretty decent play on my own part hector palmas had a great start to 2024 winning at 22 percent tiago does switch to the one but that doesn't i mean getting frankie to tori doesn't exactly um <laughs> Give me red flags by any means with this horse. So Roberta's love. I'm going to sit um, on a really nice trip, and hopefully she can trip out in this race, working very forwardly. And like I said, Hector Palmas had a great start to the meet. The last horse I'll talk about is the sixth clubhouse bride. Uh, Noah has this horse in third. Another one that wants to be part of that pace scenario, but has shown her best stuff on dirt coming in maiden and maiden and optional claiming state bread company, basically what this race is. So definitely could show, but it's going to have to overcome that early pace scenario i'm going three one two patrick's going uh three two one charlie's going two one three and noah's going one two six guys moving over to the san Anita oaks which is race number six and there's a massive name in this race that i'm sure everyone has heard of by this point it's a five horse field easily headed by the number two kinza at four to five but not far behind is number three copian for mike smith and richard mandela and dick mandela at nine to five and other than that is Corposo at four to one. I'll switch over the picks right now. Patrick, I'll let you go first here as we are all on the border going with Kinza, but Noah is going with the number three copy and copian to beat um, the number two Kinza as yesterday. If you guys remember, if you guys watched the bet and show on wood Memorial, you guys should, if you didn't check that out already, he labeled Kinza as the best three-year-old in the country, but obviously he thinks that she's going to get beat here, but Patrick, not too much to say about Kinza. Not too much to say about Kinza. And I, I want to questions, question Noah about, you know, his philosophy, because that's very going against uh, whatever. Uh, you know, Kinza, I mean, listen, you know, I, I'm trying. I, I was trying to beat her, you know, when I started handicapping this race. I, I just don't know how it's possible. I mean, this horse yeah. you know, cuts the fractions. And, like, you know, I look last out. You know, I, had, I watched the replay yesterday because there was a horse that we were um, looking yep. at. Uh, at aqueduct who ran in this rate, uh, ran in the last race. And, um, you know, everybody was tiring late, but she just kept going. And I, I just, uh, this, this horse is unreal. You know, I mean, I know yep. you could look at the buyers and they've dropped a little bit, but, um, listen, I'm not going to try and beat her in this spot. And I'm sure you guys think the same, uh, Kyle, you know, anything else. And what do you like about her so much too? Well, I'll throw it to Charlie too. Um, but I mean, she has had it her own way. I will say that she's been leading the entire time. But Charlie, based on time form, I mean, she's probably not going to be that loose. But I mean, time form has her way faster than everybody else in this race, just early wise. Yeah, I mean, again, I don't, I don't know. Like you mentioned, I, I, I envisioned this horse obviously 
I mean, early on, it seems like a horse that would likely need the lead, but I kind of figured anyway, by natural ability and speed, that she would get the lead. Um, yeah, again, I don't know if it'll be that big of a, dis, a you know difference, but that's kind of how I saw this race, and I agree with Pat. I'd love to kind of hear what Noah thought, because I kind of feel like this could end up being a repeat of what happened when the two and three raced each other last time, you know, where Copion tries to, you know, hang in with Kinza as long as she possibly can, but then not that this horse faded by any means, you know, was within a length and then lost by two, but where I think this two horse is just able to, you know, set the tempo, go at the pace that she wants and just wire this field. And I, d I don't really see a reason of concern why that wouldn't happen again. I mean, the works are great. And like Pat talked on, uh, touched on even though there's the slight regression if you want to even call it that i won't exactly be angry about having a 92 as a figure i mean it didn't look like this horse was regressing at all so i think she's the most talented three-year-old filly and absolutely the horse to beat i don't think this field's necessarily you know how if it the field's weak or bad i just think kins is that good yeah and i don't disagree with you by any means Co copian copian uh i'm gonna go with copian for the rest of this and if i'm wrong then no i'll definitely let me know about it look of I've progressively um progressively getting better for Dick Mandela. Mike Smith grabs the reins over Pratt, who is in Kentucky that for the Keeneland meet. Um, look, th there's no shorting this horse, right? I like we all have Kins on top on the on the screen, but there's no shorting this horse. She continues to get better. Um, we've seen how good Omaha beaches have been through his first crop, owned by Spendthrift. I mean, obviously the connections are well meant. This is a horse that's going to sit off of Kinza, but I mean, like Charlie said, I mean, this isn't this feels like last time to me. Like Kinza's going to go out to the lead. Cop Copian's going to try and stalk by you know length back or something like that. Maybe he'll try and send after her to try and you know give her a little bit of pace pressure. But it just seems like Kinza's so much faster than these horses early on. It almost just seems like Kinza's just going to go to the front and say, "Catch me." if you can but underneath guys there's a lot of other ones i mean you got corposo for peter urton who had ran a really nice race last time at a mile uh with david herrera up. obviously gets back on the mount we'll have to improve a lot to be able to be in the win conversation but definitely a point there for sure and nothing like use the other one has shown speed in the past but is nowhere near as fast as kinza is uh, early, you'll see the time she's made the lead is 23 and 1, 23 and 1. Kinza's running 22 and 2s and being ahead of everyone by a length. Just doesn't seem as fast to me early as Kinza. Basically, the other Baffert, Detori hops aboard. Might be one to round out your trifectas, but wouldn't necessarily be one on the win unless she greatly, greatly improves. I'm going 2 3 1. Patrick's going 2 3 5. Noah's going 2 3 1. And Noah's going 3 2. One guy switching over, and this is where we start getting into the late pick five here. And it's no five horse, six horse fields moving on here, guys. Because starting off is race number eight, and it is a field of seven now. Um, the race before this is a 12 horse maiden race. Then you move on, and we'll we'll get there. But um, there's a seven horse field with an early scratch of the number four, Jammin' Eddie, as a lot of us did know that. Um, and I see your picks right there, Patrick. I'll put them in right now as we move forward so charlie you're going with the number three california tiger as am i um, i'll put the picks up on a second Noah's going with number two big bet jaffin but jaffin safa wow that's a hell of a name big bet jaffin safa i'm we're going with california tiger charlie i'll let you talk about it while i put in the picks would you like most about him yeah so honestly for me and i'm guessing you kind of felt the same way kyle i'll let you elaborate but i'm just kind of banking on the mile is just not with California Tiger wanted. I mean, if you look at the efforts, this horse was consistently running at six furlongs and was consistently actually improving. Uh, then had the, you know, the last time effort at six furlongs where it just was a kind of regression that came out of nowhere by a decent amount. Then moved this horse uh, after the claim to seven furlongs. And I get that it was a slow pace, but still ended up romping and w beating that field pretty easily. And yeah, it was a favorite, but still two to one. It's not like this horse was, you know, even money or less than even money. So that was a really impressive effort. Then tried to stretch out to a mile after such a strong performance at seven, and it just didn't work. For me, I like that they're getting this horse back to six furlongs. Uh, I know faster but still is working pretty lights out anyway with the 46 and two last time i just think this is a horse that's working well and that is going back to a good distance i like that the blinkers are on as well i just think he's really primed to have a solid performance in this spot i'm guessing kyle you kind of felt the same way going back to six i mean furlongs. yeah that's basically what it is this these these big numbers you'll see running in these state bred maidens um i don't mind this last effort they went 20 i mean they went super quick up front for a mile 
Um, now she she was winning an open company. Granted, even though it was a claiming race last time for Jeff Mullins, Hector Palma like has obviously been very good. As I stated before last race, uh, I just realized I'm going with not 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 the straight Hector Palma double, but the the Betten and Booz and Hector Palma double. But um, she she just looks to sit a really nice trip in this race. Since I show the time form here. It's one that favors front runners, according to them. And you'll see the three out in front. There's California Tiger has a 116. The only one close is I'm so told with a 99 coming from Los Al, which I don't have the horse anywhere. Everyone else thinks the horse is really interesting. And Patrick, you have this horse on top. So I'll kind of cut it to you here. This horse has been near the lead, running a mile on the turf and down the hill on the turf. Do you kind of envision a kind of like a lead or a little bit of a stalking trip for this horse? Yeah. So, you know, I, you look at the two turf races and you think she's in, you know, sorry, not she, but he's in a uh, great form. And I just, you know, I wonder if this horse just seems to be the right horse at the right time in this spot, you know, cause he looks yep. at the six furlong spot uh, last time. And that was on the turf and did not run well at all. Um, and, you know, with Hector Barrios, I, this horse is going to go. Um, I, I just wonder how much true speed there really is. Uh, the, th the three does interest me as well. So I, I find that as a, you know, what you guys said about the three is interesting and could that horse could be loose on the lead. Um, if the six doesn't sit one of those stalking trips and decides not to go. So, um, uh, I think this is, you know, an interesting race and, you know, five to one morning line seems to be pretty nice. And Charlie, I'll throw it back to you here and then we'll, um, I'll talk, we can, you can talk about the two if you want, cause Noah has that horse on top. Then we'll move on. I think a lot of people give a lot of disrespect to these low sal runners that, you know, they're saying, yeah. Oh, they're running at low sal. Now they're coming over to Santa Anita. It's a big step up, but obviously this horse has done, you know, tried and true as, as I feel like that's right into play. Granted, even though this was on the turf and, you know, she hasn't run good turf races since last year, but 10 to one and nine to one. So, you know, so kind of that disrespect. So I think you'll get a decent price. I think you'll get that five to one in this race. But um, look, those low sal races could come back very good. And, you know, as I said, the, the price has climbed. So the six could be interesting. You have the source in second. Yeah, I do think the three will end up getting loose, but I, I would absolutely love to get anywhere near five to one on this horse. I think Pat made a lot of strong points, and I agree with what you were just saying, Kyle. I think a big thing is they do get disrespected, but this horse has had two straight efforts now to kind of show you. I understand that, you know, the first effort, the horse got fourth, but it's not like, you know, that, you know, he was nowhere. So for me, I kind of see it as, you know, so I'm told is now ran twice at Santa Anita. Both efforts were very respectful. One of them being a winning effort to show that this horse absolutely can run here. And kind of, I liked what you showed with the time form because that's how I saw it too. I thought this three could get loose, but the six would kind of sit that stalking trip. And, you know, if nobody really works that hard because this three just gets away, I don't think the six would exactly be trying to press because I don't think the horse is fast enough to be able to try to win that way. But if this six can just sit a few lengths off and kind of get the first jump, I mean, I guess if the three were gas out, he, the horse could even win the thing. But if not, you could still get a nice price underneath. And then going into the two, I'm guessing Noah's angle was simply that this horse is the only closer in this, in this race. And, you know, obviously last time out was in an ice cold pace, which didn't work out well. So I think the big question for me, with so I mean, I'll tell you what, at three to one, I wouldn't touch the horse. I'm guessing Noah probably mm -hmm. was hoping he would get more of a price as well. Uh, for me, it would just come down to what happens with the pace, because if there is any sort of pace meltdown, I know it doesn't look like it, but we talk about this all the time working both ways, where it looks like there has to be pace or it looks like there won't be any pace, and then it's the opposite. So I just kind of think if the two can get pace, the source could absolutely win, but that would be the one thing that would make me a little nervous is if it is a colder pace, like we saw what happened last time with the source, then I don't think the two is a chance. Yeah, and I that's exactly what I was thinking with this horse. I had this horse – in third originally, but I just didn't think there was enough pace. That's why I want the five. Tis a good thing. The other Carla Gaines in this spot just looks to sit a little bit closer and get jumps on the horses like the number two. Uh, big bet. I can never. Jaffin Safa. Jaffin Safa? It might. I don't even know. I'll, I'll take I'll take the L on that one. That's just the way it goes. But that's the way exactly the way I saw it, Charlie. So there's just a lot of different ways you can go underneath. But I'm with Charlie thinking the three can get loose. I'm going three, seven, five. Hatch is going six, four, three. Charlie's going three, six, two. Noah's going two, six, five. Guys, switching over to race number nine here, and that is going to be the Monrovia Stakes. Grade three going down the hill, on of course, on the turf for $100,000. Another field of seven with an early scratch on the number two. Ice dancing, and I'll bring up the picks right now, as a pretty heavy favorite in the number six, AG Bullet. Uh, after a really nice win last time going down the hill, the number one, Graceland Gray, 
is your second choice at three to one. And then third choice is shared between two horses, number four and the number five at five to one. Guys, bring it up the picks right now and you'll see all of us. I thought this was really interesting. All of us are going with the second choice in this race. Watch a replay. One, Raceland <laughs> yeah. Gray. And we will bring that up. Don't you worry about that. Um, but Patrick, I'll let you talk about her first. And then Charlie, I'll let you, I'll throw it to Charlie and then we'll kind of go around the table here. But Pat, I mean, the number one, Graceland Gray, that last time out, we're talking about a replay, but, and we'll go through it. But AG Bullock got a perfect trip and Graceland Gray, needless to say, did not get the perfect trip. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, that's, you know, that goes along with, you know, and growing as like a handicap. Sorry, Pat, stuff. real quick. Uh, yeah, sorry. The, so the two you're looking for is Graceland Gray, whose fave was favored in this race. And number four, AG Bullet is this horse who's in the gray silk. Sorry, Pat, go ahead. I just want to point it out. Yeah. So, you know, I was just going to say watching replays, you know, as a younger handicapper, this stuff, you know, early on, I would never do. And I would easily have, you know, put AG Bullet uh, on top, you know. Um, so I just think, you know, watching this replay and looking at the company that Graceland Gray has been in, um, you know, this horse had an excuse last out, steps back in here and, you know, in a race that, you know, is, I would say more wide open than not, uh, if they, if this horse can sit the trip again, should be right there. And hopefully at a better price than AG bullet, uh, will get home for us. I mean, definitely be a better price. Charlie, you saw on the inside there, not necessarily like, you know, a really bad trip by any means, but Kimura saw, thought uh, he saw a hole, was going to, and then just got shut off right there on the rail. Never really could gain up the momentum, but a nice hold for second over a lot of other oncoming horses was a good sign for me. Um, if she looks to set a better trip in this spot, which could be on the lead even as time form has it, um, I just think Graceland Gray really uh, takes another step forward here. You'll see time form has it favoring front runners again with the number one Graceland Gray at a 111 early. And then there's the only other horse is the eight get the money, albeit she, I think uh, she definitely prefers a target in front of her, judging from that last race down the hill. But Charlie, anything you want to add about, against uh, with Graceland Gray? Otherwise, you can move on to your other two. Yeah, no, I mean, I love, I would love to get the source at three to one. I'm assuming since a lot of the bigger betters are smart enough to watch replays, they'll see the same thing. We won't get anywhere near it. I uh, love that J, uh, JJ's hopping aboard. And no, I agree with Pat completely. I thought this horse, again, I didn't think it was really any like bad effort by the jockey. It was more so unlucky, but the horse got shot off after sitting just off the whole time and having a great trip and then still showed plenty of interest without really even having the chance to be truly asked until at the very end because of having nowhere to go and was obviously bet down to favoritism for a reason. And I'll tell you what, if the pace is that cold and this one horse ends up getting to be on the lead, I think it'll be an even easier victory than I initially envisioned because if you don't make this horse, you know, have to work it all and he'll still have plenty of leftover kick and is working well i think this could be a comfortable victory for her but we'll have to see what happens uh, in terms of my other two i uh yeah i ended up going with the four just with the fresh face angle i mean i watched that replay from the race and the only you know horses i was really impressed with uh well i actually thought the two was interesting because the horse was flying late but obviously that one scratched so i'd probably move the six and the third now for me uh but yeah i thought the four was just an interesting angle with the uh fresh face obviously has run very consistently with that 88 89 89 I uh, would love to get five to one on this horse as a horse, you know, maybe mix in a double or play underneath. And, uh, you know, ran against Rose Maddox and Stan Scam, who are two yeah. of the best horses at Santa Anita when it comes to these down the hill races. So narrowly losing to those two is nothing to be ashamed of. Wouldn't surprise me at all if this horse ends up winning. But uh, I think she has a ton of potential and you get a good price and could sit a really nice stalking trip. The question is, can uh, obviously this horse, you know, stay close enough knowing that there probably won't be a hot pace. And then the six is for me, a play against. It's probably a horse I wouldn't want to use on my bets, especially at nine to five, just because I do think everything kind of worked out perfectly. Bullet got a, a dream trip, sat right off, and then as soon as the opportunity was there to go, one and, you know, obviously one going away. But I think, again, if this uh, one horse gets a cleaner trip, which obviously we all kind of agree should in theory happen, that this six could be vulnerable. Pat, you don't have this horse anywhere, but I do want to point out that this horse ran massive off of a 11 month layoff. Um, you know, stalking granted got a really nice pace, but off an 11 month layoff from the switch to Baltus. I mean, this horse would not be one I would leave off my tickets by any means, but I understand why you're trying to, why everyone's trying to beat this horse after getting a perfect trip last time. But Pat, you're trying to beat AG bullet 
and then you're trying to go with two others that uh, you can touch on. And one of them I think is very interesting. Yeah. Charlie hit, you know, everything that I uh, had to say about the four, um, you know, I look at the eight, get the money. You know, what does it for me is the, the outside draw. I think, she, yep. I think she's going to really like that. And her, her form has kind of proven that, I mean, besides on debut, which you're going to give her, give her a break there with the works coming off. And then, you know, She's going to be second off a nice layoff after coming back. I think I think you got a serious horse in here as well, Kyle. Yeah, I mean, I also I, that last race was really eye opening for me. Again, another horse off a ten month layoff and was yeah. able to do that. Um, that was a great ride by JJ that time, and I just think that this horse is working super forwardly. Corner could have her in a very good position. I just think get the money is definitely interesting to round out your trifectas. And exact as second time off the layoff and second time off the turf. Like I said, no disrespect to AG Bullet, but I understand why you're trying. Why everyone's trying to beat her here. I, we all have the number one Grayson Gray on top to do just that. I'm going one six eight. Pat's going one four eight. Charlie's going one four six, and Noah's going one six eight. Guys, moving on, and this is the future, of course, on the day. This is the Grade One Santa Anita Derby. Draws a field of eight, going a mile and eighth for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars and i'll bring up the the field right now with a pretty heavy morning line favorite for baffert the number four imagination coming off that win last time out the second choice being the number three stronghold for free sue and damato third choice is going to be shared between the number two to Paulo and the number seven mcveigh for barrios and sheriffs and i'll bring up our picks right now for the santa anita derby and two of us are going with number four imagination but noah my friend, the astute man himself. We are going with the number three stronghold to upset the Bafferts and go and take Phil D'Amato to the Derby starting gates. But boys, I'll let you go first. You guys are lockstep in this race, all, both going 4-3-2. So I'll let you guys talk about amongst yourselves and I'll get to tell you why you guys are going to be wrong. But what would you like most about Imagination, Charlie? And then I'll, uh, then like I said, you guys can talk amongst yourselves on why you guys are correct. Yeah, I mean, I just thought the these obviously these last two efforts have been a huge step forward. And what I've really kind of liked about him is imagination seems to be a horse that kind of, you know, steps up with the competition. You know, you obviously kind of look and in each race, this horse has taken on, at least in theory, better and better horses and has been able to respond to it. And a big thing I kind of like is someone, you know, who is kind of hesitant about those, you know, forwardly placed speed like horses. Uh, especially for longer races, but I guess that's pretty much all you find in Cali anyway. Uh, but what I really liked, and I'm curious what Pat kind of thought about Imagination, was I thought we kind of got to see a different side of him last time out where he kind of got into one of those grindy, gutted out performances and was able to win the duel and kind of show that, you know, he does have that side of him where if the going gets tough, this horse can face adversity, which for me is a huge green flag for a speed horse because that's kind of the big towel if they're kind of legit or not is when they do face adversity and a horse does kind of press them and make them work. Do they, you know, fade badly and immediately, you know, succumb to the fight or are they able to bring the fight right back? So that's kind of what my main thing is that I really liked was seeing that kind of new side of him last time out. Pat, what'd you think about that last performance? Yeah. Last performance. I, I definitely did like, you know, dug in late and was able to, you know, win by a head uh, in the San Felipe, um, you know, has dealt with smaller fields, which, you know, not the horse's fault. Um, you know, it's just tough to see. Uh, and I, I, I just think, you know, with stronghold, uh, who, you know, has stepped up in every spot, um, imagination has just proven it to me and, uh, I'll be satisfied with losing to stronghold. If imagination does fold in this spot, but I, like I said, I think this horse is going to be very, very tough on the front end, but, there is a lot of speed, um, and I know Kyle, you can hit on that because that's definitely going to be an interesting, uh, yeah, tactic and that's, for the jockeys in this. And that's race. where I'm going is because of that exact point. You see the four, six, and eight, and you know they're talking. We're talking about how you know these Bafferts they get added in here and they don't want to battle each other. Well, there's no uh, Winstock. Definitely, I don't think. I mean, that is going to be fast, but I don't think he's going to be fast enough to challenge. But Look at these yeah. numbers, guys. I mean, you, you can see just by the graph here, but 102, 113, 108, 116, 112, 117, 115. Like, if, if we talk about how on paper it looks and there's not going to be a speed deal, how is there not going to be pace in this race? Like, I, I just don't see – I don't envision a scenario where they don't go fast up front, which leaves – 
Baffert doesn't put his horses on stalking trips. <laughs> well, that's also true. Correct. And the Winstock might have to take that stalking trip because of everyone that's going to probably be just that much faster than him. But imagination, look, I'm not trying to discredit what he's done the past two times. That, especially that last race was very, very good. But if he has to show a real good side of him to overcome this type of pace scenario, um, Tessuto, who uh, Noah has in third, Again, might take back off that last race, has shown can run with the target for Papa Dromo. But EJ won the Cups, not going to be slow um, up front. Winstock, we mentioned. Uh, Stronghold's not that slow. Tapalo, what's Tapalo going to do? Tapalo can't go, really yeah. pass anybody. He's got to go. And Curlin's Chaos is going to come a little bit probably from the back. But Imagination's not going to have it easy up front, I guess is my point, which is why I'm leaning on the number three, Stronghold, the winner of the Sunland Derby, to bring it back. Uh, and kind of pass him down towards the eighth pole working super well at Santa Anita for D'Amato. Obviously this, he thinks highly of this horse kind of shopped around a little bit to kind of get away from these Baffert horses. Um, like Nysos is a point that uh, was a horse that I'm sure he wanted to stay away from. So picks up a win in the Sunland Derby, very convincingly goes to the loose at Los Al fraternity loses to Winstock, but Winstock had it his own way on the front end. So there's a bunch of different ways that I can, that you can go through it, it was a, I was eight and three quarters behind Nysos, but three and a quarter above everybody else in that race in the Bob Hope. So I think Stronghold, we haven't seen the best of Stronghold yet. And if he continues to improve, especially off that 89, he could give imagination a run for his money, especially with the correct trip. And underneath, guys, I went with McVay. This McVay's been pretty uh, at the butt end of my jokes a lot of the time because, you know, he runs into these massive monsters and he's so far back, but he's cashing. You know, he's made $60,000. Um, he did cost 1.2, but this is a horse that I feel like with the correct setup could be good and could be one horse to round out exactos and trifectas if they go blistering up front like they should. And Sheriff's has had a very slow start to the year. It's very uncharacteristic of John Sheriff's. We know he's one for 28 so far in 2024, one for 30 on the meet, but he, McVay is showing that he can work very well leading up to this race. Sheriff should have him in a great position. And if they go fast up front, McVay could be the one to pick up the pieces. But yeah, you guys are going with Stronghold underneath and Apollo, another one that's going to be part of that pace scenario. I just don't know how it's going to set up, but obviously we will see on Saturday. Noah's on me with our on with Stronghold with me and he's going imagination second and he's going to Suto in third. I'm assuming for this exact reason that this horse showed that he can rate a little bit. And if he's going to be, you know, next to stronghold or something like that, maybe they'll run by, they'll run by the leaders at the top of the stretch. Um, at least the fading leaders, maybe not imagination or imagination. Uh, oh no, it is imagination. I'm just losing my mind today. I literally said the horse's name three times in the past minute and I've already forgot it. Um, <laughs> but the last race, I'm assuming he can continue to improve off that 79, which is what Noah sees to have this horse in third. But we all we say it all the time, guys. Pace makes the race. And this is the race that's going to be completely decided by this pace scenario. If Imagination's able to somehow get it his own way up front, he could easily win for sure. But I'm looking at Stronghold to run with a target in front of him and hopefully up, upset Imagination in the Santa Anita Derby. But, guys, that'll wrap up the Santa Anita Derby. Let's go on to, um, let's go on to race 11 and race 12. We don't have to take too much time with those. I'm going three, seven, four. Pat's going through four, three, two. So is Charlie going four, three, two, and Noah's going three, four, six guys moving into race 11. This is an optional 50 going a mile on the Santa Anita turf course draws a full field of 12 with two <laughs> also eligibles being the morning line favorite, a very lukewarm three to one in the number seven man among men for Richard Mandela. And Umberto Rispoli, second choice at five to one is the number six Ottoman Prince for Dettori and D'Amato. And then third choice is going to be the number 12 Faustin for Baffert and Kyle Frey at six to one. Guys, bring up our picks right now and you'll see three of us are going with the number seven man among men. But Charlie, you're going a little bit out, outside the box, not too much, but you're going to go five to one with the number eight Aligato for David Herrera and Mark Latt. Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously, I think, uh, you know, the questions with this race only being a mile on the turf, not that the efforts, you know, have been bad with Aligato a mile on the turf. I mean, you look three back and the horse lost by mm -hmm. three fourths of a length. But the question is obviously going to be with this horse being a closer and uh, needing pace and the two efforts before, uh, 
you know, more recently being a mile and an eighth and a mile and fourth, can the horse get the distance? And I'm willing to take the chance. I mean, I understand obviously now he's seven, so that's obviously a little bit of a concern and doesn't have Pratt, as you touched on earlier, is not going to be racing here. But this horse loved the Santa Anita turf. It's two wins, three seconds, five thirds. So always a very game competitive horse that's somewhere in the money. And for me, you know, I talk about this all the time, how much I love consistency. And if you're looking for consistency, I don't think you're going to find someone as good as this eight horse where every single effort is pretty much, you know, an 88, 89 or in the low 90s, which, you know, you love to see. So for me, I'm just hoping that there is, you know, enough pace and this horse can sit close enough to get in there. And uh, I mean, I'll tell you what, I mean, I know it's 12 horses and it's wide open, but I would love to get five to one on a horse, I think, because this much ability. Uh, I certainly think the seven is super interesting. Uh, the question, obviously, uh, you know, you kind of look at both ways. I'm curious to hear, you know, what you and Patrick, and I know we can't hear from Noah, but what you guys thought, but maybe I'm guessing the angle of just second time back off that huge layoff takes another, you know, step forward and going back to that mile now after trying the down the hill and nearly winning is that what you guys kind of liked about the seven? Pat? Yeah, it's part of it. Also, you know, a five-year-old that's run only three times, uh, you know, debuts with a 71 buyer and, you know, showed, um, you know, a resilience to bounce and, you know, actually go forward and move forward in that race when it kind of got all bottled up and was off slow. It was pretty bad. Um, you know, then takes a step forward again, uh, going a mile on the turf at Del Mar and won impressively. Um, and, you know, last out off the layoff, like Charlie said, just, um, you know, was very, very, very uh, strong in that race. Tough second. Um, and I think, you know, if I'm the connections in this spot, I'm, I'm, you know, loving where I'm sitting in, in here. I, I I think, you know, with Mandela, who's been firing at a great rate right now, mm -hmm. um, this horse should be locked and loaded um, going uh, this distance on Saturday. I completely agree with you. I like the trip that this horse is going to sit. I'm envisioning that's not necessarily a very, very fast pace, but there are horses that want to go to the front in this race right here, a mile at Del Mar. Granted, it was back two years ago, but Last race, best buyer by far, only losing to Catalina Eddy, who's a really nice allowance horse out on the West Coast. I think with Mandela firing the way he is, Raspoli gets it. It's my racehorse, Spendthrift. There's just a lot of a lot of good things going for this horse. And second off of the layoff, I think this horse can be even better and continue to improve a lot. I know... Lightly raced five-year-olds are a little bit of a trepid situation for a lot of people, but that last race installs a lot of confidence in me that this horse can run. I mean, Warfront out of a Galileo mare, this horse has turf miling like all over the place. I think Man Among Men has a really, really big chance to run a really big race come on Saturday. And like Charlie touched on Aligato, I completely agree with him. Um, David Herrera rides for Mark Glad all the time. That's no problem for me. Might be a little better going longer. Um, this horse doesn't necessarily like to win, but always gives you hit his best run, being that um, he's he's seven years old now, but still running at his best. I think Aligato will get a good trip. Might not be on the win end, but a good horse to round out your exactas. The six, another uh, another horse that exactly like the seven for me. Second time over off a layoff for D'Amato. Dottori gets aboard uh, this Irish bred, uh, Irish bred gelding. And last time out, I mean, Dancing Buck, a lot of good company keeping. It kind of broke in, never really was able to get going down the lane. So coming back off that, I think we'll be better second time off the layoff. So Ottoman Prince is not one to take lightly either. Pat, real quick, I'll let you have the last uh, the last say here. You have the only horse we don't have, the number three, Sydney Street, John Sadler for Hronis and Hector Berrios. Yeah, just uh, had a lot of trouble uh, at the beginning of February in that race, um, and I looked if this horse can get a better trip, um, I think he's, you know, at eight to one morning line, you know, right in the thick of things. Um, hopefully he gets a pace to run into. And um, like I said, I, you know, just it, it is a right there with all of them and uh, could be a, could be one to hit the board in this spot. And this is one that's going to get the jump on everyone else, right? If he's sitting, you know, two, three, four lengths back, definitely going to have a chance to, break ahead of everybody else. I'm going seven, eight, six. Patrick's going seven, eight, three. Charlie's going eight, seven, six. And Noah's going seven, six, eight guys switching over to race number 12, which is the closing leg of the late pick five. This is the echo. Eddie stakes draws another full field of 11 guys. This is Calbreds going six and a half furlongs on the dirt. The money. 
for 125 this is where you make the money for sure. Your morning life favorite is number 10, Tom Seaver for Ifrisu and D'Amato. Second choice is Shady Tiger for D'Amato and Juan Hernandez. And third choice is shared between a bunch of different horses. So I'll just bring them up right here. Both Charlie, it's a 2v2, boys, again, just like it was a lot during the Wood Memorial Show. Patrick and Noah are both going with number 10, Tom Seaver. Charlie and I are both going with the second choice, Shady Tiger. Patrick, since you're technically alone on an island here above b- between us three, I'll let you talk about this horse first. I know Noah feels very strongly about this horse. So what would you like most about the number 10, Tom Seaver? Uh, yeah, so I wish Noah was here to explain that. Uh, second off, uh, if he, Tom Seaver, runs like the Tom Seaver on the Mets used to yeah. pitch, the way yeah. his team is playing, uh, that well, wouldn't be good. But if he pitches the way he did when he was in the MLB, uh, I think we'll win easy. Uh, Hall of Famer. So, should. Uh, should, right? Uh, listen, I, I'm always impressed, you know, when a ho- it's easy to said and done when a horse wins on debut, uh, you know, comes back uh, and sometimes, you know, might need a race of sort, especially after a layoff. And this horse uh, ran uh, gigantic, uh, yeah. just settled in and blew the field away. Now, the field the horse uh, uh, faced was not the strongest, but I think with Phil D'Amato um, and the connections, uh, this horse could be meant very well. And, uh, you know, it should be morning line fa- favorite of five to two, I think should be tough. Yeah. And obviously, Noah feels very good about this horse as well. Granted, the only thing is that this horse is coming from turf to dirt Correct. for D'Amato, but this horse has been working well enough on the dirt. I'm sure D'Amato has a plan for this horse all along. But that is one thing. Second off, another uh, layoff, like we mentioned before with those horses. First, second race of the meet for Tom Seaver. And like you said, Pat, if he races like anything like Tom Seaver pitch, you guys should be in pretty good hands. But Charlie, another kind of turf to dirt angle, although this horse did break his maiden on the dirt, the number three, Shady Tiger, you and I both have this horse on top. Yeah, I just think that uh, pretty impressive for one that likes to kind of stalk rather than be like, you know, a true closer and has still been able to handle two hot paces and get the job done, which I think is important in a race where there certainly will be a lot of pace. Um, I like obviously JJ and D'Amato pairing up. I think all the efforts have been solid. And the big thing for me is kind of like you touched on. I mean, not that the turf effort was bad by any means, but to see that the best effort uh, to date, you know, was uh, on the dirt speaks volumes to me. And, uh, you know, for me in this race, I think these kind of races can be a little wild. And uh, as talented as the 10 horse is, uh, you know, like you touched on, the works are good, but the horse hasn't run on dirt yet. And I have a feeling that horse is going to get pounded on race day and will probably be less than two to one. So for me, uh, I kind of wanted to just try to find some different potential horses. And I was going to put the 10 in third, but then I thought picking a two to one horse in third is just kind of soft. So I might as well just either put them on top or toss them. Uh, My second choice, the four, uh, I was a little surprised about eight to one. I mean, I know the figures aren't amazing, but look, I mean, this horse was right there on debut. And then obviously they clearly like the debut because then next time comes back at less than even money and wins. And again, I touched on this earlier. For me, what I really liked is I understand the pace uh, was a bit soft, so sure, obviously no idea is going to have to take a step forward. But, you know, it's only run twice, and I touched on how I like speed horses that are able to, you know, get on the lead but face that adversity and go on to win. Mm-hmm. So the fact this horse was able to battle throughout and win is, you know, a little intriguing to me. And then uh, third place, I went with uh, two by four, who actually beat the four on debut. Uh, my only real concern is I think I understand that obviously maybe this horse is just not meant for the turf and it's kind of good to go back to the dirt. I just – don't know if he's fast enough. I mean, again, I know he was able to uh, obviously, you know, catch my horse last time out, but lost to Shady Tiger and obviously just missed. So maybe this horse is good enough and, you know, went toe to toe with them. That was just my main concern is I think he's good enough to maybe get in the money. I just don't know if uh, two by four is fast enough to win it again. I think the 10 is super talented, but I thought if I wasn't going to put this horse on, put the heavy favorite in second or third. I mean, look, it makes a lot of sense what you're saying. This horse is going to be one to benefit off that fast pace that I showed what time form has. There's a lot of horses that want to go for the lead again in this race. And I think the three is going to sit a really nice trip exactly like she like he did breaking his maiden, only winning by a neck. I'm hoping for a little bit better than that. But um, yeah, that I'm just envisioning that same type of trip in a hot pace for the number three, Shady Tiger. Tom Seaver looks to sit that nice trip. I was not exactly sure that this horse um, is going to want the dirt, but obviously D'Amato putting the source on the dirt after running two very good efforts on the turf. 
has a plan in mind. So Tom Seaver is going to be my second pick. Nothing too creative. And the two by four is going to be my third choice. Charlie touched on everything I wanted to hit on. But I'll throw – I'll put up here. So Noah has the six and third. This is the last horse we'll talk about. Then we'll move on to our best bets, guys. Last call, London, was a horse that ran in the Turf Paradise Derby behind EJ won the cup, who has now gone on to run in the Santa Anita Derby. So not bad co company kept for last call, London. Six to one. Does generally like to be towards the lead, but can run with the target. I think last call London will be somewhere towards the middle of the pack with the Tory aboard for Peter Miller and hopefully um, for Noah can get up. Not again, we'll have to class up based on numbers to uh, compare to some of these horses, but could be one to round out your exactas, especially if the pace quickens up like it says on paper. I'm going 3-10-8, Patrick's going 10-3-4, Charlie's going 3-4-8, and Noah's going 10 Three six guys switching to our best bets. I'll show Noah's first. Noah's going a double race nine, starting in race nine, one three ice cold. That is a Monrovia stakes and with Graceland Gray and the number three stronghold in the Santa Anita Derby. I like that bet. You'll see coming up from me, but a race 12, a win on the number 10, Tom Seaver. I said I told you guys he feels really strongly about that horse, and five to two is not a bad. Uh, price to get your play of the day home. Noah, good luck with your best bets. Patrick, you're up next, my friend. Race number eight, a double six over one four. Again, starting in race eight, singling. Um, uh, I cannot remember who. So that I'm told. Was. Yeah, so I'm told. That's the five to one horse getting good value there. And race number ten, an exacta four three in the, the Santa Anita Dor Derby. Patrick, talk about your best bets. Yeah, so I'm told. I think can get loose on the lead in that race. So I'm gonna. Uh... See if I could get a five to one home to start a double and then play around with the uh, one and the four, uh, you know, in a race that I think is uh, somewhat uh, open. Um, and then in the uh, Derby, I'm going to go with the uh, imagination on top of Stronghold and Exacta, uh, you know, hoping Exacta will pay somewhat decently, probably won't. Uh, but as a best bet, I think that. Uh, it's a pretty strong bet, so that's why I'm going to go with it uh, for my best bets on Saturday. And again, you know, five to one, you know, five to one's five to one, dude. You get five to one on Exacta, just as good as picking a five to one on top. That's all that matters. Right. Patrick, good luck with your best bets. Charlie, going kind of the same way here. You're going race nine Exacta. That's Graceland Gray on top over two four, one over two four in race nine, and in race number ten, you're starting a double with Imagination going seven eight in race eleven. Charlie, talk about your best bets. Yeah, so I'd have to uh, slightly adjust my first one because I think that was the That's one with right, two correct. horse yep. scratch. So I would just switch it then to one over four six. Um, obviously, wouldn't pay quite as well with the six as that's probably going to be your heavy favorite, but uh, I digress. Uh, again, we talked about it. We talked about the replays and what we thought. I thought the one was the best horse in that race and just got a troubled trip. I uh, would love to get that value because it would obviously make those exactors pay even better. Again, I like the fours, the angle with the fresh face. And uh, again, as much as we knock the six as a potential favor to beat, we do have to give credit that this was a horse coming off a huge layoff and still ended up getting the job done. And again, I think uh, imagination obviously makes a ton of sense in the Derby. I mean, Noah could certainly be right, and so could you with Stronghold. But for me, that's the best horse in the field. And then going into the last race, again, you guys made a ton of great points about man among men who could very well win. Uh, but I also touched on a lot about why I really like the eight Alligato. So might as well play uh, my double into both of them. And hopefully I can, you know, me and Pac be right with imagination and then one of those two can emerge in the next race no hey i love it man good luck with your best bets we again we you know we do have different opinions but we all explain to ourselves and we're all pretty much on the same page no matter what happens charlie good luck with your best bets i'm going two different doubles here guys kinza in my opinion look she's the best she could be the best three-year-old filly in the entire country i think tarifa might have something to say about that at this point but kinza is very very good and i'm going to single her in a double going with a very competitive race in the seventh that we didn't talk about going with the number nine um and the number 10 the number nine in that race as i pull it up right now guys hold on one second that is a horse coming over from england that the tory hops aboard it is the number nine royal charter for leonard powell at five to one with frankie de tory riding and number 10 irish patsy at six to one for mike mccarthy and number to who looks to take advantage of a pace scenario we'll need it if uh, she does want to win, but no matter what, even though I'm pairing it up with Kinza, no matter what, you're going to get a good price in that race, especially with a five, six to one morning line. So that's where I'm going to lean with that. And same thing as Noah, I'm going with an ice cold double race number nine, one, three. That is Graceland Gray over Stronghold in the Santa Anita Derby looks to be 
a good double, hopefully paying somewhere in the seven, eight, nine to one range. But guys, that is going to do it for Benton and Booze in episode number 71. It's been a great episode covering the Santa Anita Derby, all stakes and the late pick five on Saturday, April 6th. So for my co-hosts, Charlie Freeman and Patrick Kunsel and the ghost of Noah Maher, this has been Kyle Roscoe. And again, a very special taped episode 71 of Betting and Booze in here on the HHH Racing Podcast. And until next time, everybody, crush those bets, win those photos, and stay safe, everyone. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good night.